This is section 4.7, which is inverse trigonometric functions. We're going to talk about inverse sine function, inverse cosine and tangent, composing trig and inverse functions, and applications of inverse trig functions. So what we need to think about is how we determine whether or not something has an inverse function. So if you remember back to when we talked about inverses the first time, we talked about the horizontal line test. And the horizontal line test tells us if a function is one to one or many to one. And if it's many to one, then it doesn't have an inverse function. So if you think about the sine graph, that is like a perfect, ooh, if I can draw, it's a perfect example of something that is many to one. So therefore it would not have an inverse function. However, if we were to restrict the domain, so like, let's say, let me do a bigger picture of this. So if I take my highlighter here and I think about, okay, if I start here and go to there, that would pass the horizontal line test. And so that is what we do with our trig functions. We are going to restrict the domain. So for sine, we restrict the domain between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And you can see this little graph here. That would pass the horizontal line test, and therefore it would be 1 to 1, and it would have an inverse function. And so this graph on the right here is the inverse graph. So, and you'll notice how our x value went from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, changed to negative 1 to 1. And so the x's and the y's flipped, just like inverses do. And then our range would go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which was the domain in the other. Okay? So this is just kind of summarizing what I just said. So the, if we have an angle in the interval between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, such that sine of y equals x is the inverse sine, or we can say arc sine of x denoted, so you can write it as this. Or this and you need to know that those are interchangeable so you, you're gonna see it written both ways they mean the same thing so it says the domain of our inverse graph is from negative 1 to 1 and our range would be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 okay so we're gonna go through some examples of evaluating this would be um, very much using the unit circle or the properties of what we know about inverses so for this first one, it says find the exact value without a calculator of the inverse sine of negative one-half. So what this is saying, in other words, is it saying what is the value of sine? No, sorry. I'm going to say that again. What is the angle where sine of theta is equal to negative one-half? So you could rewrite this as this over here. And we know how to evaluate that. We know how to find what theta is. We're finding our y value where y is negative one half. And that would give us the angle where the inverse, um, the inverse sine of negative one half is equal to that angle. So if you can do this on the unit circle, but what you have to keep in mind is we're restricting the domain between negative pi over two and pi over two. So we're talking the right side of the unit circle and if we do that, we would get um, 11 pi over 6. However, we're talking about angles that fall between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So instead of saying 11 pi over 6, we're going to write it as negative pi over 6. So that would be what the inverse sine of negative 1 half is equal to. Okay, then it says to find the exact value without a calculator of the inverse sine of sine of pi over 10. Pi over 10 is not on your unit circle, but this, whenever you see this, the inverse of a trig function of the trig function, remember inverses undo each other. So remember when we were doing f of g and g of f and they all simplified to x. So that means that this would just be equal to pi over 10. So we don't need to have that on the unit circle to know what that's going to be equivalent to. I added two other examples in the, in the notes, so I wanted to go over some just to give you extra examples. So like if I have the inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2, that would be me asking what's the angle where 
our sine value, so our y, is square root of 3 over 2. So that would be pi over 3. Okay, and then what happens if you have something like inverse sine of cosine of pi over 6? So notice the inverse, so this is sine and this is cosine. So they don't undo each other like the previous example that we did. So what you want to do on this one is you want to work from the inside out. So cosine of pi over 6 just means we go to pi over 6 on our unit circle and we say, what's the x value? Well, the x value is square root of 3 over 2. Now you're saying the inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2. And so that means that we're now saying where is our y value, square root of 3 over 2, and that would be pi over 3. Okay? So then if we move on to cosine and tangent. So same thing with cosine and tangent. We need to restrict the domain so that way we have an inverse function. So the cosine domain is going to be restricted to 0 pi to pi which is the top half of our unit circle. You can see here's a picture of, this is our cosine graph. This is the inverse or the arc cosine graph. Okay, and then tangent. So tangent is the same as sine. So tangent will be between negative pi over two and pi over two. So again, the right side of the unit circle. Okay, and then just one other slide to show the end behavior of the tangent function. So you'll notice on the tangent function, we have vertical asymptotes. And then when we have the inverse of that, the, in, the inverse tangent graph, um, you will see that we have those vertical asymptotes flipped and are now horizontal asymptotes that those graphs are approaching. It so just changes the end behavior. Okay. So we did an example of this, but just to kind of state what we talked about, composing trig functions and inverse trig functions. So if you have sine of the inverse sine of x, it's going to equal x. Same with cosine, same with tangent. This is going to be always true when they are defined. Okay? And then the following equations are only true for x in the restricted domains of sine, cosine, tangent, and that's the inverse sine of sine is equal to x, and same with cosine, and same with tangent. Okay, our last example is not talking about the unit circle. We're talking about triangles now with this. So it says to compose each of the six basic trig functions with inverse cosine of x and reduce the composite function to an algebraic expression involving no trig functions. Okay, so what we have to think about is that what this is saying, what this triangle is saying, is it's saying that our inverse, so remember inverse cosine of x is going to be equal to an angle. So the angle we're talking about here is theta. So instead of saying sine of theta, cosine of theta, and so on, we can say sine of the inverse of cosine. So that's just, instead of having theta in there, we're putting in that inverse cosine that we set up here would be, so sine would be the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which is just square root of 1 minus x squared. Cosine, oops, we know it's just x because we were given x over 1, okay, which matches with what we're talking about right here. And we know that cosine of the inverse cosine, those are going to cancel out. So then we have tangent of the inverse cosine. So tangent would be square root of 1 minus x squared over x. Cosecant. Oops. So cosecant would be flipped of what we have for sine. So this would be 1 over 1 minus x squared. And if we want to rationalize the denominator, it'd be the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. Oops. Secant. Since we know that secant and cosine are reciprocals, we know it's just going to be 1 over x. 
And then I'm running out of space here. Oops. <laughs> Cotangent. Cotangent would be x over square root of 1 minus x squared. And if we rationalize the denominator, it would be x square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. Okay, so those are all six trig functions based on our triangle using that inverse trig function instead of just theta. Okay, let me know if you have